let's talk about lab scopes, which typically all your advanced technicians are into, and a lot of folks in post-secondary trade schools and the professionals are getting their sea legs, so to speak, on lab scopes. Let's get just something very generic across all kinds of lab scopes, whether it be like single channel little guys there, $150. I mean, come on, there's no price reason to not be scoping these days, guys. Or expensive stuff that's PC based, eight channels, two time bases, the sky's the limit. They all have these similarities in common. Number one, x-axis that is horizontal and that's from left to right and that represents time and then up and down the y-axis that represents either voltage or amperage if you're using an amp clamp instead of a voltage uh, lead so those degrees of measurement time how much time you have in the window versus how much voltage amplitude or current amplitude I'm also measuring are done with the controls, typically with menu buttons on scopes like this. Maybe it's built into your scan tool. So you'd be moving that thumb around on that scanner when you're in scoping mode and you're getting into things like the connection or I should say the, uh, the adjustments for your voltage scale on that particular channel. If you have a multi-channel scope, so you turn the channel on, then you say what kind of voltage or what kind of amperage do I want to see on the y-axis. And then you also do the same thing on the x-axis, left to right, for your time scale. How much pattern do I want in that window that can fit into my laptop screen or the little screen we have right here on these little portable scopes. And then you also can determine, do I want to be looking at AC or DC? Now, not, not all scopes have what's called AC coupling, where you can say, ignore the DC on that 12, 14 volt line, and let's just measure the AC, like ripple, ripple voltage will show you on the car coming up really soon. If you don't have that, then there are inexpensive adapters that do AC coupling for your scope. Now, also, you can blow the pattern up. So just like if you were graphing your scanner PIDs and you're looking at data on a road test and you do a, uh, a recording, a snapshot of data, and then you stop it. If you're graphing, you can then blow the graph up. Same thing with the scope. That's the neat thing about a digital storage oscilloscope, DSO, as opposed to the old analog scopes that I started out with years ago and the big box analyzers that did the same thing. You could just basically see it and then it was gone. You couldn't record it. These guys you can record. If you record, you can blow it up and make it large and scrutinize the pattern. 